Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Cryptocurrency Channel. Today we're going to dive into Cardano. It's looking like it is ready to break out of this two plus month sideways trend. Now, if you remember back to February 27th, the peak of Cardano, that was the day that I talked about selling some Cardano. I got absolutely ripped apart for wanting to take profits at the top of a market. Just remember that moving forward. I had some comments of people saying that I don't gloat enough. So just take this 10 seconds as my one and only gloat for Cardano. I lie, I probably gloat a lot more. Let's take a look at Cardano today because I think we're gonna break out probably in the next few days, maybe a few hours, but it's coming up very soon for reasons on the chart, which we have covered many times before. Before we hit that, you guys gotta hit the like button, subscribe, because there's about 40% of you that are watching without subscribing to the channel, how dare you? Bell notification icon so you can be updated with time sensitive content like this piece today on Cardano and future cryptocurrency videos as we've called Bitcoin falling and rising. We're doing really well on the channel at the moment, probably because it's a bull market and bull markets are quite easy to tell. The hard stuff comes when we start to turn and we go into a sideways bear market, but that's not at the moment. Let's dive in to Cardano. Treat this video as your guide to setting up a chart setting up your markets and following, tracking a market, because that is a very common question I get. How to trade? What do I do next? What do I look for? So use this as one of the examples. I do it in almost every video, but let's have a look at Cardano in this case. This is generally the chart that you're going to end up with when you open up your trading view. Of course, if you were trading this on something like Swiftex or Binance, you're probably going to see a chart like this. This is going to come up. Then you've got to head over to trade and buy, and then you find the token over there and you can use the chart. But in the trading view, this is what we'll see. We've got the candlesticks, you've got the colors. You guys know if you've been following the channel, I don't use the colors. What do you use the colors for? Basically, you want to remove the noise. I just use bars that are white and people say it's boring, but I want to make money, not look at some colorful charts, right? We'll look at the color in just a moment. So this is what I do first. We have our white bars. To do that, double click jump into them. I'm not going to go through everything here because I do have other videos, but just to let you guys know, that's where you do it. Change the colors right there and you want to change it up here. Now, another thing that's really good to do with Cardano, especially because we've been going sideways, you can drop it into a line chart and the line chart will just help you identify the support and resistance areas just a little bit cleaner. At the end of the day, like I said, we want to remove as much noise as possible, but not too much that we don't get the signals that we're looking for. And so I use a bar chart because it shows me the highs and the lows and it doesn't give any more emphasis to the closes compared to the high and the lows that the candlestick chart does because I want to know where these highs are. Now I'm going to drop on a whole lot of lines and numbers. These are our tops at around the $1.50 level. Now we've just shot up again and we use volume. Remember to use volume. And if you're wondering where and why, Trading in the Shadows of the Smart Money, fantastic book to learn more about this, but I'm going to go through it in this video. So this was the day, we've got to, got to take a few steps back before we can get to this point to know what's going to happen next so that you don't freak out when this thing goes to two, three, five dollars. This is the build up. We had the 27th of February, the peak here where I was gloating at the beginning of this video about saying I wanted to sell this day. I was looking to buy on this day, the 26th, because we broke out. But when you're trading, signals change, especially if you're trading on a daily. The next day was one of the most extreme volume days. Volume just means how much trading is happening that day. It's not the number of buyers or the number of people selling. It's the total volume that's being traded. We saw high volume, very high volume. You can scroll out and you can see that this volume is part of the peaks. Check out this volume. That was a peak, went sideways. Check out that volume, peak, sideways. It's really not rocket science. It's just that people don't pay attention to this stuff and they would much rather have a look at a candlestick chart with a whole lot of colors, drop it down to a four hour or a one hour chart, listen to someone tell them about some sort of triangle up here and some resistance line that they don't even know what the hell they're doing as opposed to reading a chart. And that's what I prefer the most. Other things do work and I'm not having a go at those, but there are other ways which I find far more successful and this has been one of those. This day, huge volume, the close was lower. So now I'm adding in the high, the close, and the volume. That's four, that's three, okay. So, and the end of the run, so that's the pattern. Okay, so we got huge volume. Look at this close, it tried, but it got slammed back down by the sellers. 
So the sellers came in, said, no, nah, we're not going higher. We're going to take our profits to all of the noobs or the dumb money that's been buying up through here. And you could have had a, a trade like I was talking about here to enter on the breakout. Now, if you see this come in, then you got to start protecting yourself. Not that it went any lower than these levels, which is okay. So we could just wait it out for two and a half months. But if you see this, well, that's what I did. Thought, all right, I think my money's just going to be sitting on the sidelines for some time with Cardano. So I'm just going to move it out, hold some of it just in case, just in case this thing flips the next couple of days. But I want to move some out so I can go and play elsewhere for March and all of April. And now we're into the 6th of May. So that's what we're looking at here. Now we're starting to see the play come back. This was the Coinbase listing. There was some announcement here. We had three massive days up. The market wasn't ready yet. It went up. This was all the excitement slammed back down. Then we had another little peak or another test got knocked back down. And then this was the Bitcoin destruction that happened over April. So we had a lot of days down here, plus some volume that came in on these lows. Not as much as I would have liked, but now we are seeing the market come back pretty strongly and retest the level of $1.30, break out, use it as support. And now we've just seen increased volume. So this is the highest volume that we've seen for 12 days. And the previous volume was on the major low. So this was a major low that came in that we hadn't seen for about two months. And so this is pretty good volume. It's a good volume pattern for a breakout. We're not there just yet. We've got to break through that $1.50 seven level. So call it $1.60 as a round number to break above and close for a couple of days. That's the real confirmation that we're going plus the volume. Plus you want to see higher close. It's not these peaks or wicks if you're looking at candles. So you can see these wicks that head up and then they get shut back down just like the 27th of February. So that is a pattern, but it happens at the end of markets or at the breakout. So you don't, it doesn't really matter if it's within a period like this, but these sort of patterns matter when, they're, when they are at the end of a major run. So we've been sideways for some time now. I would say this is consolidation. So accumulation, consolidation, the same thing. People basically buying Cardano on the dips, maybe selling a little bit on the pumps, which are on the news where retail gets in. But there's another major rule here from GAN, WD GAN, legendary, stock trader from early 1900s. I'm not doing him justice by just mentioning his name. He was an absolute legend. I believe he has a statue in Wall Street as well. So if you want to learn more about trading, WD Gann is the man. And I also use Wyckoff theory as well. And those two guys knew each other from the early 1900s. So there was another rule from Gann that we have four times at the same level. Generally, the probabilities are higher that we're going to break through on the fourth attempt. Sometimes it's the fifth, sometimes it doesn't on the third, but generally on the fourth, we, we get there. And so if you're not sure what I'm talking about here, there's one attempt, one attempt at $1.50, second attempt at $1.50, third attempt at $1.50. Now I'm saying $1.50 because none of these days closed above $1.50. They spiked above, so the market went up, but then it closed back down. Now we have seen our highest one of our highest closes that we've seen in some time. That was just yesterday, just happened a couple of hours ago. So this is our fourth attempt. Potentially, we get through on this attempt. The probabilities are now in our favor for a breakout. And that's what's getting me quite excited about another trade on Cardano. And the fact that my money was doing something else. I was looking at Solana, I was looking at Ethereum. Ethereum has been doing quite well. Uh, plenty of others which we've talked about on the channel. So make sure you are on the channel, subscribe, bell notification icon, and follow me on Twitter because I'll post about these on Twitter as well. So much easier and quicker. So this is our fourth attempt now. And those things are all starting to add up. We see the 20 week moving average. So this, uh, this is the red line right here. We haven't really touched, well, we haven't touched it at all. We came close on the 23rd. We thought maybe we were going to get a bit of a, a head on and get to that point, haven't made it. That number is at around 82 cents. I suspect we're gonna raise a lot higher on the moving average, then maybe we'll touch it at some point. Maybe we don't even touch it for this period of the bull market and we follow something more similar to the Bitcoin bull market of 2013 where it didn't touch it until it peaked and then uh, dumped about 60 or 70%. That's okay, we'll see what happens. Our 50% level also hasn't been touched but it got a little bit close. The only thing we've done here is bounce off our 61% level, and this is off the major range. 
And so that leads me to believe that yes, we've still got some more time to go up. The volume has decreased. So nothing is ever 100%, but what I wanna do next is just move this Fibonacci to another swing low level and to find those so that you guys can see that yourselves is put it on a weekly chart so you can remove some of the noise, get rid of these colors because we're not babies or we don't actually need them for our trading in this type of trading. And then I'm using a swing low back here. So I'm using this swing low because it's a major swing low. So you've got a weekly, this is a weekly chart, so it's a macro view. I'm not on the hourly charts or the 15 minutes. I'm on the weekly. And this is a strong move to the downside that reversed the market, that changed the market direction. This was heading down for one, two, three, four weeks. That's a month. Can you imagine, or do you remember what you were doing one month ago? Most people not. They'll probably freaking out about something, but that's four weeks. Most people cannot last four weeks. So that's a major point. That's why I use those points when it comes to the Fibonacci's and anchoring it to the low at around 11 or 12 cents. Now we're starting to get a little bit closer to this 50% bounce. So I don't think we're at a major uh, top in the market because we're not using a huge major range. We're just using the next closest swing low, the next point where the market actually pivoted. If I brought it up, sure, we'll get some sort of hit here, but this is the reasoning for that. So I'm pretty comfortable with this at the moment. So that's another one of my reasons that I have on the side here. We've, we're getting close to the 20 week moving average. We've, we've, we'll probably call that the closest we're going to get at this stage. 50% Fib at 85 cents. That low on the 19th of April was at 89 cents. So that's probably the closest we're gonna get. We're about four cents off the 50% and we were about uh, 13 or 12 cents off the 20 week moving average. The time frames, the next important part. So on a previous video of Cardano, I've gone through and explained what all these time frames are about. This is just to give us an idea of how long the moves can last. Everyone asks how long, what's the price gonna be in the 30th of June? How long is this move gonna last? What's it gonna be on December 31st? They're kind of the wrong questions to be asking. You need to be asking how long does a particular market that you're trading, how long can it last? Like how long does that run, that move last in the set conditions? We're in conditions of a bull market. How long do moves usually last in a bull market? And Cardano has thrown up a few numbers to us around the 20 weeks, 22 weeks. Sometimes it extends a little more to around the 29 weeks. So something like 20 or 28, 29. 20 weeks is five months. 29 weeks is about seven months. So these are the sorts of lengths of move Cardano will do from the bottom after a top. So if that sounded a bit confusing, just go back and listen to it again. This is a peak, here is a low. Obviously I moved those because I was playing with the fibs. This is about 17 to 22 weeks up. Uh, that's 17 to 22 weeks across before a breakout. Now the top here is around 22 weeks from this low, 29 weeks to this next peak. So that's why I'm saying it's somewhere in that, that region. Now, if we're using this as a reset, potentially we have this to look forward to, 22 to 29 weeks up, but but it can also have 50% of that range or any of the Fibonacci divisions. We use it in time, which is the vertical axis, and then price is the horizontal axis. And if you can meet these two together, you're gonna to be a fantastic trader and you'll know what's going on in the market as opposed to, figuring, just listening to some random on the internet. That's why I always talk about where I learned it from and how you can learn it as well. Of course, there is the free newsletter that you can join so you can stay up to date as well. The link to that is in the description or you can join us in the Investor Accelerator if you wanna have more of a group experience on learning how to understand this, uh, learning with the community in the Investor Accelerator. Link to that is also in the description. 22 weeks, halfway, 2028, halfway that is about 10 to half of 28 is what, 14. So 10 to 14 weeks. If we start the count from the low, that's this level here. And I've got a July point somewhere out here. So this low, we're just gonna use this tool, measure it across, there's 14 weeks. Somewhere in July is the longest halfway period. The shortest halfway period I'm looking for is approximately 28th of June. So somewhere into June, I would suspect probably in the nine weeks because the 21st of June is also a seasonal time. I haven't talked about those before, but seasonal times are equinoxes and solstices, which are every three months 
when our seasons change. And markets are made up of people. People affect the markets, especially in bull markets. People are extremely emotional. So that's what I look for in markets. It makes a whole lot of sense. So we've looked at that. The closes are getting up there. The daily swings are in action. The volume profile is looking okay if we go into the daily swing. But on a weekly chart, we have definitely lost a lot of volume. But that could also mean that we are just in a sideways trading period. Fourth time at the price level. That's the big one. And we've had a few other pieces to come together in this puzzle. puzzle. And then the shakeout. The shakeout is a, is a much needed uh, chart pattern because we want to see the weak hands get out of here. And we've seen the shakeout on the 18th and another shakeout on the 23rd. That just means the market dumps really quick. If you remember those days, it was only three or so weeks ago. Market dumps and it just wipes out a lot of people. Keeps heading down, does another wipe out, takes out some of these, these stops. People will have their stops sitting beneath these lows, wipes them out, and then we start to move in the other direction. So that's a good sign. That's exactly what happened to Bitcoin after COVID. We saw that massive dump in March. The same pattern is starting to play out again, except this time we're in a bull market. So that's why I've got a lot of these pieces of the puzzle are coming together. Like I've said, nothing is 100%, but the point is that we want to stack the uh, probabilities in our favor. And this is starting to stack the probabilities in our favor for a better setup and a better use of our money rather than sitting on the side and hoping and buying in on news like, wow, it's getting listed on Coinbase or PayPal or something like that. This is what happens when people buy on news that up for a couple of days, one and a half days, and then down and sideways, or it pumps for a fair bit of time. You can make some good money off it. It really just depends, but it's not a hard and fast science to trading and investing whereas this gives you set rules and set plans and it just allows you to be a lot more confident in what you're doing and so that's my look at cardano could this be the last chance in the dollar region i think it'll be one of the last chances especially after we've been in this dollar region for about 10 weeks so i'm looking at it from the top even though we got into the dollars uh just a little bit earlier here in february if we do it from there to where we currently are it's been nearly three months in this dollar region. And I know from the experience looking at the historical data here of Cardano that we will tend to go in these regions for 17 to 22 weeks when we're sideways. 17 to 22 weeks in 84 days is about 12 weeks. So maybe we have another couple of weeks in this dollar range. But I would say the time is starting to run out. And that's the reason for why I've titled the video one of the last times at a dollar or something around that region because I think this is probably the last times we'll see it for this bull market. Who knows what happens afterwards? Maybe we retrace 90%, just like Ethereum did from 2018 through to its low in 2019 or so. So I'm just saying this period, now we could probably see our next targets, which we've looked at for some time, just using our Fib level from that anchor point of the top and the low, and it's approximately $2.50 and our uh, 200% or 100% of this run is now at $3. That's been the levels since February top because it's basically the same, very, very similar. And so that's the two next levels that I'm looking for, $2.50 to see if we get some sort of reaction or the $3 level if we get some sort of reaction up there as well. Next level above that, $3.90 and then 300% is at around $4.40, $4.50. So we got some nice round numbers, $2.50, $3 almost $4 and then $4.50. So that's what I'll be looking for, plus a few other ways that I'll be looking for targets, which I'll mention in other videos because this one's long enough to explain Cardano, but you can use this across any market. You can use all of the same trading tools across your Ethereum's, Litecoins, Polkadot's, whatever it is you're trading. It's all the same rules, which is the benefit of learning technical analysis. I'll wrap that video up there. I'm excited for Cardano, if you couldn't already tell. I have it in our demo portfolio here on SwiftX, ADA, Cardano. I'm going to purchase $500 worth of this while I'm on here. 500, you can't even see that. 341 ADA. I have about $1,500 left in this account. Instant buy, confirm, and we've just added it to our portfolio. So we now have another 341 ADA. Thanks once again, guys. All the links to this are in the description down below. Stick around on the channel. I'll have a, probably another one or two videos coming out in the next 24 hours. I want to touch on some altcoins because it looks like alt season's going nuts yet again. Come back to this video if you want to learn about trading. It's a pretty good detail to explain what you need to do. 
like the video up, goes a long way to helping out the channel. Very easy, free, cheap, all that way to support it. Very, it takes a lot of time to get into this. So let us know, hit the like, subscribe to the channel, Twitter, Instagram, see you over there for Q&A and my portfolio update. Until the next video, have more fun to get more done.